Hello everyone. After having just finished Lifeless Planet, I wanted to come back and do a review on it. So my overall impression of it is that it's pretty good and it has a lot of flaws, but I really enjoyed my time with it nonetheless. So it's primarily an exploration game. Oh god, see if I can make this. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay, Whew, that was close. It's primarily an exploration game with quite a bit of platforming elements as you just saw there. And it also has some light puzzle elements. It's made by Stage 2 Studios. And you play as uh, this astronaut guy who's crash-landed on this distant planet. He's been in cryostasis for about 15 years. And he was told that this planet had life. That's why, that's why we were sent here. It wasn't just him, he had a crew as well, but, uh, you know, stuff happened in the crash landing. And him and his crew were told, and they were sent here because this planet supposedly had life. But... Well, as you can see, it's a bit of a wasteland. I mean, just look around. Not much here. Not much life here. Not much green. Not much shrubbery. And by that I mean absolutely none. So, 15 years far away from Earth, and when we arrive here, under very bad circumstances, it's crash landing, it's not exactly what it was cracked up to be. So you're exploring around, trying to piece together what, what's going on, and of course trying to get home as well, because you crash landed, so you're not exactly going back. So one of the things that this game does really well, and that I really enjoyed about it, is the sense of scale. I mean, you can see it right here. Look at this massive valley I'm in. Look at how far these mountains go up above me. And how far they continue below me. It's truly massive. You feel so tiny. Which is helped by the fact that you can zoom your camera back so much. There's uh, three different camera zoom levels. Up close, far away, and right in the middle. Most of the time, you're going to want to be zoomed out like this. Just so you can kind of see where you're platforming easier. But it also really helps to uh, drive home the sense of scale. And that's a big part of it. I think the a big part of the atmosphere and the mood of Lifeless Planet is just feeling like you're almost insignificant, you know? You're dwarfed by everything around you. You're tiny. You're just trying to make your way and survive. So that's something that's really cool, and uh, you find some alien structures on here as well, on this planet. You know, signs of, of past life that for some reason is, seems to have gone away. And those similarly kind of uh, dwarf you and make you feel tiny. Another thing I like about it too is the sense of weightiness to the character's movement. So, I mean, you're an astronaut in a big suit, right? You're in a big bulky suit. You can't exactly run super fast. This is as fast as you can go, on foot anyway. And uh, your momentum is very important. So you can boost. Normally you can only do one little boost like this. Just one. But during certain parts of the game, you can actually find uh, refill canisters that will refill your extended boost, which allows you to do uh, allows you to boost a bunch more times, like this. So for certain sections, we're going to be platforming across long distances, like this one. You'll get the extended boost. And the way your character moves around is... It feels very weighty and very nice. Because, uh... You really have to decide... Uh, you have almost no air control, so you have to be very careful with where you're going before you take off, before you use your booster. Because if you take off your, uh, if you use your booster going in the wrong direction when you jump off, you're going to be screwed, because you really can't move that much in the air. So you kind of need to decide where you're going exactly before you leave the rock, or before you jump off. And similarly, you can't just stop yourself in midair and, you know, go straight down. You uh, have to consider your momentum. You really do have to consider your momentum and exactly where you want to go before you jump off. You can't just jump off in the air like a crazy person and go wherever you want. So you have to be very particular, very deliberate with your decisions on where to go. And of course, if you go too fast, if you fall too fast or anything like that, you die. You go kasplat. Like a big bag of potatoes. It's really quite a disturbing sound it makes when you die. So I like the, uh, the character movement. And I just mentioned the fuel and how you can refill at canisters to get the extended boost like this. 
That's actually one of the kind of weird things about this game, actually. It does quite a few things that feel forced and strange, unfortunately, and that's one of the things, actually. So you find these refill canisters, but the thing is, you only get to keep the the extended boost for a certain amount of time. Let's uh, get on to here. We're going to do a little wire walk. Okay, don't look down. Don't look down. <laughs> yes, let's be very careful here. There we go. Oh god, turn, turn. There we go. Ah, 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 ah. I might actually fall here accidentally. Um, so yeah, you get those refill canisters, and you only get to keep the refill for a certain amount of time. Eventually it'll say something like, you know, you've run out of fuel, and then you're back to the single boost. That confirms it. This is not planet Earth. The thing is, though, it happens at a very awkward time, because you don't actually have a fuel meter of any sort. You don't actually have to conserve your boosts or anything like that, and, you know, go back for a refill if you run out. No, it's entirely arbitrary. You have literally unlimited boosts. Until the point in the game where it just kind of arbitrarily decides, hey, this is a section of the game where we don't want you to have the super boost anymore, so we'll just get rid of it. So, you'll be walking around and the game will just say, you've run out of fuel, even though you didn't even use it because you were just walking. It's like, oh, I guess that part of the game is over. It's really awkward. It's very strange. In fact, it might be about to do that. I'm not sure exactly when it's going to run out here. And a similar thing happens with your oxygen as well. You do have, of course, you're, you know, you're an astronaut, you're in a suit, you need to use oxygen. And there's no oxygen meter, just like there's no fuel meter for your boost or anything like that. But there are certain parts in the game where you'll just, you'll run out of oxygen. Or be nearly out of oxygen and you need a refill. But that, just like the fuel thing, it also feels very forced. Because when it happens, every single time it happens, it happens at the exact perfect moment when there's a refuel thing like... 100 feet in front of you with a shiny glint on it that makes it obvious where it is. So it's like you go most of the game not worrying about it because you, there is no oxygen meter or anything of the sort. And then suddenly it's like, oh my god, you're out of oxygen. You need more. And then there it is right in front of you. <laughs> there's like, there's, it's like they're trying to make it, you know, dramatic. You're running out of oxygen. You're going to die. Except it's not at all because the solution to your problems is always right in front of you. See, there we go. Jetpack fuel depleted. Extended boost mode disabled. I, I was just walking. Like, it's entirely arbitrary. So, there's some awkwardness there. Let me get the rest of the way up here so I don't fall off before I start thinking of other things. Must concentrate. So yeah, now I only have one boost. And that's all I can do. So, the platforming, which you've seen quite a bit of, is uh, a major part of the game, and it feels pretty good. Because I mentioned the uh, weightiness of the character and how you have to decide exactly where you want to go before you leave, and, uh, yeah, it just feels, it feels nice, especially, especially when you have the extended boost enabled, because that allows you to go very far, which is very cool. You know, we just have the single boost here. The platforming is obviously very short-ranged, if there's even any platforming at all, because you can't go that far, but when you have extended boost, you can go some very long distances, and it just feels cool to, you know, fly through the air and be boosting, be boosting to get there. It just feels really good. Soaring through the air as everything towers around you. You know, just this little speck in this massive valley or something like that. Moving to your destination. It just feels good. And uh, the music is also quite good. You might have heard a little bit of it in the background. It uh, It's pretty intermittent. It kind of just comes in and then just disappears for a while. Leaving you to just hear the atmospheric sounds around you of uh, nature and whatnot. You know, the water, the wind, stuff like that. But when it does come in, it's really good. Yeah, some good music. So some more things that the game does that feels kind of forced and weird is... I remember there's one section where there's just an invisible wall. Like, there's this thing that I saw I could go into if I just boosted in the right way and jumped off a, a certain platform. Because it was gated in. So it was gated in and I was above it and I thought, oh, I could just boost into it, you know, to get inside of the gate, right? And I tried that and I hit an invisible wall and then just died. <laughs> so, it does some weird force stuff where it's like, you should be able to do this, but oh wait, you can't, because we've kind of just arbitrarily decided you shouldn't be able to. Just like with the boosting and with the oxygen. Feels a little bit strange. Something I also want to mention before I kind of leave this area is the terrain. 
So let's go ahead and look at the terrain. Right, so this is a game where you're obviously... You're doing a lot of walking, you're doing a lot of running, you're just... It's, I mean, it's primarily an exploration and platforming game. You're always going to be looking at the environment, and... Exploring the environments is, I think, the main draw of it, at least for me. But there is one thing I don't like about the terrain. When it comes to the environments. There's a lot I do like about the environments, but the terrain is a pretty big thing that I... I have some problems with. And my problem with it is that if you're going to be looking at the environment and the terrain all the time, which you are... It really needs to look good. And the problem is, it often doesn't. Uh, during flatter sections, like, if you just look here... On this ground here, like, the terrain looks fine. It doesn't look amazing, but it looks pretty good. It's decent. But there's a lot of sections... Like this valley here, if you look over here. Where the terrain is absolutely massive. Like I said, you're dwarfed by it. It goes really far up into the sky and really far down. The problem is that it just... It doesn't look very good. Like, it's... You have these crazy, like... Kind of... Nasty-looking stretch textures and, like, really harsh edges. It, it just looks very... It doesn't feel natural at all. This doesn't feel like how terrain actually looks. It just seems very... Blatantly computer generated. Of course, it is computer generated, obviously, but it doesn't feel right. It feels like somebody was using the terrain creation tool, you know, painting on terrain in a terrain editor, and kind of went overboard and accidentally made it too tall and then just kind of left it. Like, it just looks weird. Often peeks out at these, like, really flat spots and, yeah, super stretched, and sometimes it just looks nasty. So I think the terrain is really ill-fitting to how uh, beautiful the other stuff in this game is. It just really stands out as being strange. And really hurts my sense of actually being in a place. And it's quite frequent. I mean, look at here. Like, you have these sheer walls on this terrain, and you can see these... Like, it's super polygonal. Like, the poly count for the terrain is not very high. You can see where it suddenly drops off. It just doesn't look very good. During sections like this, where you have these very tall, kind of stretched mountains and hills. But there's a lot I like about the environments as well. It's not just that, there's some good stuff. Uh, for one, it's just very, uh, it's varied. The environments are quite varied. You go from some very different environments. This one here is like a, you know, a, a hilly section. Very tall, sort of valley, hilly place, and uh, there's a bunch of other things, like hot springs, and there's even lava. And there's uh, scenes that are dark, scenes that are underground, so there's all these different environments. Underground, dark, lava, hot springs, so there's a nice amount of variety. And the audio design is also pretty good. I mentioned the music, which you can actually hear right now. It's quite good. There's a lot of eerie sounds, too, like, for example, the one you can hear right now. Let's get closer to this. I mean, listen to that. Like, what is that structure? And that noise. It's quite eerie. And there's some other small details that are pretty cool as well. Like, one time I was going up to an edge, like the edge of a rock, and I was staring down at some massive valley. I was just so far below me, I knew if I fell off, I'd be gone. I'd be a goner. And when I stepped up to the rock edge, there was this little sound that played of a bunch of, like, pebbles falling down a cliff. You know, like a bunch of loose rocks had suddenly been released because I stepped onto it, and they'd just fallen down and were falling down the mountainside. That little sound played, and it was such a cool little detail, you know? Just going up there and hearing those rocks slide, and imagining me sliding down with them. So there's some pretty cool details like that. A couple more things I want to mention. There is a strange disconnect between the levels as well. Uh, some of the in some of the connections between the levels are perfectly fine, like they naturally flow from one to the other, but some of them are not at all. Sometimes when you load a new level, you're just in an entirely new place. And you have no idea how you got there or why so much time passed. For example, I was getting to the end of a level. Actually, I was at the end of a level. Where I'd, you know, I'd fallen the, followed the path all the way there. 
and there was nowhere to go forwards that I could see. Like, it seemed like I was at the end. And then a cutscene played. Oh no, I wanted to avoid this. Oh, it's fine, it didn't play a voice thing. Let's go ahead and grab this arm here. It's gonna help me very, very much. So it, uh, it played a cutscene. And then there's a loading screen. And I was thinking, alright, so where am I gonna pop up now, right? Because I was at the end of a pathway and it didn't seem like I could continue. And then there's the cutscene, and uh, keep in mind it was daytime at this point. Daytime, cutscene, end of a path. And then there's a loading screen. And then I popped up at a completely different place with no idea how I got there, and it was nighttime. So I'm like, what the hell just happened? You know, how did I get here and how did so much time pass? Like, it made no sense. And that sort of a thing actually happens quite a few times. Where you just pop up somewhere and you're left wondering, how did I get here? It's it's a bit strange. That noise really creeps me out. And by the way, I mentioned that I tried to jump into something inside of a gated area, and it was uh, invisibly walled. Well, this is actually exactly what I tried to jump into. So there's a pretty tall gate around it, but when you get all the way up here... Gamma. Gamma. Yeah, when you get all the way up here, it becomes obvious that you could easily get inside of there. And I tried it, and it didn't exactly work. Disappointing. And there's also some drama that this game has. Uh, it tries to... There's a storyline with with your wife. That is, of course, back on Earth. And there's also a storyline with a woman that you're tracking. In fact, this gre you notice this green on the ground? I'm actually following her tracks. She actually caused this green. So I'm following the green to find her. And... Yeah, there's a storyline involving her as well. And there's some, like, dr dramatic elements with them and their storylines. You know, his re your astronaut's relationship with his wife. And what happens to the, uh, the woman that you're trying to chase down. And why is she here? And how is she able to survive? She's Keep in mind, she's not wearing a suit. So she's somehow able to breathe. Despite the fact that you can't. Even though she looks human. So there's some questions there. Some mysteries. Let's go ahead and plot this in. Cool little extendo arm thing. Uh, so yeah, there's some storylines there that try to be dramatic, but they're not... They don't really work. They don't really work at all, because there's so little actual development of those storylines. So the amount that, you know, the, the amount of the story that's actually... Of story time that's devoted to your relationship with your wife back on Earth and what's happening with that is extremely little, like it's barely ever mentioned and yet it's kind of a dramatic element that is introduced, especially towards the end of the game. But since there's so little time spent on even developing it, it doesn't really have any emotional resonance at all. At least it didn't for me. And it's the same thing with the woman that you're chasing. You know, some stuff happens with her later on, but it... But it's the same sort of a thing. You, there's so much... There's so little time spent actually developing her as a character that it, it's really hard to, to care much at all about them. So I felt like some of the dramatic elements of the storyline kind of just fell flat on its face. It just wasn't developed enough. So that's most of what I wanted to say. So there's quite a few good things and quite a few things that I didn't really like. Some things just weren't developed well enough, and some things feel forced and artificial and weird. And I don't feel like the environments of these hilly areas really live up to how cool some of the other environments look. Here, let's, uh, let's blow something up. Yeah. And, you know, some things just feel silly, too. Like, I mean, this is funny. I'm a, I'm a freaking spaceman on, like, an alien planet, and I'm taking a gigantic stick of kind of comically huge C4 and blowing this up. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's funny, but it's also ridiculous. And this is a pretty serious game. I don't think it's supposed to be ridiculous.
I don't hate the stuff like that, it's just, it's a bit silly, it's a bit strange. It's tonally inappropriate, it feels like. So, it's really a story about the, the hubris of the human race colonizing uh, a planet that they haven't been to. There's something odd about that storm. Yes, there is. You know, the hubris of people colonizing a planet that they're, they're not familiar with, they don't understand it, and they, they mess around with it. And they try to exploit it for its resources and stuff like that. And it's about the fallout that happens from that. You know, what happens when you meddle with an alien planet, really? I mean, you've just come onto a new planet. You don't understand it. There's so... I mean, everything that's going on on a planet... All of the life forms that are inter inter interconnected... And how everything works on it, it's incredibly complex. So to just come onto a planet and then just start messing around with it without fully understanding it is... Incredibly dangerous. And... As you would expect, some bad things have happened. Ooh, look at this. This would be one of those towering alien structures that make you feel cosmically insignificant. Beautiful. So this is an example of one of the really cool parts of the environment. This just looks wonderful. I mean, look at that. Oh, have I talked about the puzzles? You know what? I haven't mentioned the puzzles. Hold on, I was about to end without talking about the puzzles. Okay, so it does have some very light puzzle elements. They're... they're incredibly easy. They're very infrequent, and they're incredibly easy, so they're not much of a challenge. But what I will say is that they're... not very good. They're, uh... They're mostly just like a minor inconvenience, kind of a waste of time. Again, they're not very challenging, and they don't take too long, so it never annoyed me too much, but... It's kind of... pointless. So quite a few of them are of the trial and error type. And this is a perfect example, actually. So I can use my arm here. To uh, reach these buttons on this door. So you see quite a few of these doors, and to get through you just need to press the buttons in the correct order. And the way that you press them in the correct order is simply by trial and error. So if I press 1, for example. Okay, it went green. So that is the first one that you're supposed to press. And then let's try this one. Okay, it went red. And then to reset. So now you know, okay, the first one is definitely this one. And then the second one is maybe this one? Yes. And then the third one is this one? Yes, it is. Oh, it's actually... Oh, that's right, it's loading a new level. I believe this is the Wasteland level. Yes, it is. Alright, I don't want to progress too far here. Following a blood trail as well, as you can see. So, some of the puzzles are like that. They're just trial and error. They're very simple. They're not really a challenge. They're just kind of a waste of time, because it's, it's almost not even a puzzle, you know? It's literally just trial and error. So they're not particularly interesting. And some of the others are not trial and error, but they're still incredibly simple and just kind of pointless. So... There's some puzzles there, they're not... They're not annoying, they're just kind of... Well... Not very interesting, really. So this game is definitely a mixed bag. There's some wonderful environments, like this one looks really good. You know, the uh, the mountains don't stretch up too far and look completely ridiculous. So quite a few of the environments look really good, it's really... There's uh, quite a bit of variety to the environments. I like the scale of everything and how small you feel, and just the overall mood of this game. I like that it I like that it's sci-fi. I like that it deals with humans messing around with things they don't understand and dealing with the fallout of what results from that. So, it's got quite a few flaws, but it's pretty good and I quite enjoyed it. So, Lifeless Planet is available on the official website as well as from Steam and GOG. I'll have links to all of that in the description. Thank you for watching.